Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I have Michael Brave Jayhawk Jensen here for week three. Three, and uh, I again apologize for last week. I don't want to apologize because I thought the content was great with, with the with Gabe from Survivor Atlas. A lot of good stuff, but just as far as uh, predictability of when we're going to be putting stuff out, um, you know, I would prefer to wait until Wednesday. Um, so that we have at least some idea of what we're going to do uh, the following week. So uh, I am, my schedule is is a little better for the rest of the season. Or um, there's obviously going to be some variance as, as things come up. But Wednesdays this time usually we're, we're going to aim for. You know, let's 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 kind of put it that way. So the first thing I want to do is I want to again I want to go over how what we did personally last week and then we're going to get into this week i'll let i'll let you start uh this time because i got a lot to go over. okay um so i had four of ten entries left in my uh single entry uh pool and i had 20 something entries left in the one with double picks double picks 16 i'm sorry in 6 12 13 16, 17, 18. There's like 30,000 people. So definitely playing for those latter weeks in that pool. So I definitely made a mistake this week where it's not that I made my decision early and then locked it in. I just didn't keep checking to see what the line movements are were and, and then, you know, in correlated with that, if there were any uh, – projection percentage uh, changes as well. So I, I stayed with Detroit mostly. Uh, but once I saw the pick projection, uh, the, the, the actual pick percentages, I realized I made a mistake. I, I think the spread, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the Detroit spread went up throughout yeah. the week. Yeah. And the mistake that I made is I should have just kept looking because if I saw that, I would have stayed on Detroit, but what I would have done is I would have taken a share of Houston or, or Chargers. And I know I would have took, I would have took the Chargers because Houston, I just feel has much uh, stronger value for later in the season than the Chargers do. So in, in my larger pool, Detroit ended up having the same pick percentage as the Chargers in Detroit, the same pick percentage. So I felt kind of stupid. Uh, I, I feel like I probably would have, recognize that I should probably get on some chargers. So I went Detroit and then I also took some Seattle and Pittsburgh. So I got two entry, two entries through in my larger one. And then I've got, I have 12 total through in my other one going, uh, I went six Seattle and six Pittsburgh in that, and then went down with Detroit. Very disappointing. I, I got multiple texts from friends saying, asking, you must be crushing it this year with, the with the first two you know big upsets in week one and two the highest pick teams winning I mean I'm sorry losing uh, I didn't pick those teams but unfortunately I didn't the the, the two teams I picked the most also lost so uh, definitely disappointing but still in it so uh totally different sets of pools I want to talk about first of all let's just get out of the way with Circa uh me and my partner lev leveled ourselves pretty hard uh we we, we had 15 entries live between the two of us going into yesterday and we lost 13 of them. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. You, you, we, we, we talked ourselves sort of like you, we talked ourselves into this idea that the Chargers were going to be huge chalk. Um, yeah. And we faded all of it. Uh, we didn't play a single Charger share in 15 entries. Now for Circa, um, I don't think that's a mistake. I don't think I would have taken any Chargers anyway in Circa because I would have rather taken Detroit and Dallas and then just gone down. Well, that's what we did. I ship. mean, we, we, we had all kinds of Detroit. <laughs> uh, I, think we, that, I think that was the best play for yeah, sure in Circa. Yeah. I really do. We had all kinds of Detroit, all kinds. We had Dallas. We even played some Baltimore, talking ourselves into the fact they would be lower on. We were wrong about that. Um, but we, we got two through. We, we, did, we did have – I mean, the only two that got through, and we had we had a Houston and a um, and a Seattle actually um, make yeah. it. So still there, but you know we kind of leveled ourselves. So let's talk about some of these other things that I mean. I'm going to start to familiarize. Do, do you? It's much more challenging making the picks with with one person and then have and also having that many entries. Do you feel that without? using hindsight that you might have made I, I feel I made a mistake in one of my pools and I took I should have took some chargers 
what, do you feel like you you made a mistake in your picks? Well, I, I, think I mean, so here, so here's so here's so here's the thing. I mean, this is this is it goes a couple of ways. Number one, so with the way Sclancy works with 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 poker, on the one hand, you have to kind of say, okay, given that the cards were turned over, not the results, but like with the real ownership turned over, would you have done the same thing? Um, Obviously, if I knew the charges were only going to be like 13% owned or whatever there was, which they were in, in, in Circa, I would have played them. Okay. But, but you can't, you can't w operate that way. You can only go with what you could have known before, you know? So yeah. I, I'm not, I, I'm not asking it that exact way because I, I don't think there was an indication that I would have, I could have sensed that the charges would be that low owned in Circa. Yeah, but so, I, I feel in my pool, I should have recognized that because of the information that we, I had from I mean, I saw the pick breakdown of the circuit pool and, you know, it didn't and, 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 and still didn't and still didn't move. Yeah, no, I mean, as far as circuit goes, we, we, we lived with what we lived with. I have, I have no issues with that. The um, the other the other pools were in. Um, uh, OK, so let's let's talk about the single pick, the straight single pick pool. Okay, the only straight single pick pool I'm in is the DraftKings one with the 10 billion people. Like that started with like 44 billion people and now it's down to like 2 billion people. Okay, actually it's like 4,000 4, left or something like that, which isn't that bad. I mean, it's not that bad. Started with 18,000. So it's 1.8 million for first. It's obviously going to chop like a billion ways at the end of the day. Yeah. But so there I'm doing really, really well. I have 10 entries and I'm only two of them are dead. So I'm eight of 10 live there and unfortunately because because they're just ridiculously awful it you can't really see like all the entries separately but need, need needless to say chargers texans chargers i'm just going through seahawks yep. texans like these were the only teams that i liked that won so these are the so, so these were uh these are the ones i ended up with so that this 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 tournament is is looking really really good. I mean, I'm eight of ten live with, four, you know, sixty percent of the pool gone. You know, whatever seventy percent of the pool. So that this is this looks good. Now, as far as the hybrids go, so this is the um, the hybrid. This is the one where it's mostly single picks, but then towards the end, if there's a certain amount still left, yeah. did pretty well there as well. You know, I, I I pitched some Dallas, but aside from that. Everything else went well. I played no Ravens, so I played Seahawks, Seahawks, Texans, Chargers, Chargers, Texans, Chargers, Texans, Seahawks, Texans, and I threw. I, I, I snuck a Washington through without anybody noticing. Hopefully, uh, snuck a Washington through. Seattle, Chargers, Texans. So I made like a pretty big stand of literally no Ravens over here, um, which was which was nice. So this one's doing really really well. Uh, also, this is again this one's down to. I just may as well show this. This one is down to eleven thirty one from forty six hundred. Okay, um, and that that'll eventually pick up a little bit, a little bit later on. And then this, then this, this, this sadistic pool, which I talk about, the one which is uh, doubles in five and then nine all the way to the end of the season, which basically never gets to the end of the season did pretty well over there uh as well um i played chargers washington pittsburgh chargers chargers washington chargers pittsburgh seattle like this type of pool you have to stockpile like all the good teams for later yeah <laughs> so and just hope you get lucky which i did um so those are did those did pretty well circa's annoying you know but but that's just the way it is and what other kind of neat sweat uh this is not really survivor but told you i played that circa millions pool where you go against the spread yeah and again i'm, I'm probably one of five percent of the people that play that pool correctly i think i mean i don't care who who i like in the games i just try to project who's going to be low owned um yeah and then just do it and through two weeks we're eight and two um which is it, and, and well, believe that's, it or that's not, fantastic because you probably well, have very separated picks too yeah so. well, well believe it or not through two weeks, there's nobody ten and zero of like thousands and thousands. Yes, yeah, that's that's, that's that's shocking. Yeah, um, and and what the, the sweat is that we have um, uh, they they pay out by quarters also. So after week four, they pay something. So if I can make some headway this week over you know a bunch of teams that are ahead of me, like there's some eight one and ones and some nine and ones. Um, so again, same thing. I'm just going to try to go with what's hopefully low owned, and I've been working on a sim that can help me with that, but. 
Um, so let's um. Well, well, I, I want to yeah. talk a little bit about Circa. So yeah. I have it. I have it pulled up. If you can just pull up their their tweet with their with the results for the week. I could probably even go. Uh, oh, you mean for the for the survivor pool? Yeah. Let's uh, pull it up. Okay. okay. Right there toward yeah. So after weeks like this. I love this is a really good thing to look at after weeks like this because only two teams throw out all the outlier picks. Right. Nothing against the outlier picks. I I picked Seattle and Pittsburgh. That's all I got through this week myself and, and other right. pools. Yeah. Right, but right. what we see here is basically everybody got through off one of two teams. Yeah. Now these aren't the best examples uh, because these teams don't have necessarily very strong remaining schedules but houston, but houston still, does houston has a couple they, of different spots though. they they do but it's, it's still worth looking at and the, so when it comes to like tiebreakers in a particular week if you got through without houston or the chargers so if, let's just say you took pittsburgh i would look for every reason possible not to take houston or the chargers without going too far out, out of it because if those teams become, end up becoming very valuable teams that you want to own, you create separation amongst the remaining group by be, being one of only a select few people that have both of these teams remaining. Yeah, one and, of the uh, one, one, one of the uh, one of the the, the 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 silver linings of what happened in Circuit to us is one of the two lineups that we ha- one of the two that we have 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 used neither of these um uh we have a we have a tampa seattle that made it through um so we we have both houston and, and the chargers uh, available on that entry so that that's the the very very thin <laughs> silver lining of the clouds that, that that happened but but to your point i mean houston they're 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 a, they're a christmas team they're a week third was that either 12 or 13 and they're they've been you know they've got slammed you know so that's that's going to help and they and they have a lot of, yeah they they've got they have the Jaguars in four they're at the Patriots in six I'm just looking at yeah, the green on Survivor lot. Grid they got Indianapolis they got Tennessee so that my that Miami what 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 which one's the Christmas game is it my Miami no no they're 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 like a pick them against Baltimore or something like that oh okay oh, okay oh, okay week seventeen. So that's that's a team where we I know we discussed this last year in week two or three where I think I I feel like the team was Seattle where if you got through I said you just can't pick Seattle this week because so few people have them left it yeah. makes no sense to take them you may, you may as well take a team that's slightly less favorited because if Seattle ends up being a team that you would really want if the schedule plays out you have a you have a separation pick that not many people are going to have and the char- the chargers there's not a lot on there but there is the potential you kn- the, the end of the season looks fantastic for them the last four games and the reason the last four games are really important that's when a lot of teams start you know you know ha- they they start hanging it up for the season that's when when the season starts the the biggest spread for the entire season when the season began was like 11 or or 12 or something like that that's it there's going to be 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 point spreads at some point. Now, the Chargers aren't going to be one of those teams to be favored that highly. But if they are in a playoff race and they're playing against, they're hosting Tampa, Denver, at New England, at Las Vegas, all of those teams could potentially be completely out of it. And the Chargers could have four games where they're six points or or higher favored at the end of the season. So, it might not happen, but because such a high percentage of the people remaining have used either Houston or the Chargers, if you have not used the Houston or the Chargers in any of your pools, if your pool is going to make it the distance, then you should be saving those teams and hoping that you can drop those teams late in the season on people. Yep. Um, okay. So let's uh, let's get let's let's get into it and, and let's again keep in mind that all all, all pools are different and, and we're, we're going to try to you know 
we're going to try to um, to separate between you know single picks or, or, or whatever it is. Um, but let's just sort this, I guess, by I don't want to sort this. Let, there's, let's a lot, sort yeah, by, there's a lot to look at. Let, 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 let's sort by I, I guess by by EV, I, I suppose. Um, hold on a second. Yeah, I'm sorry. We don't have a Tampa Seattle. We have a New Orleans Seattle, which is probably better. Okay. Um, okay. Let's start with, I guess, you know, let's, we, let, 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 you know, let's do it this way. Let, let's do it. Let's do it by winning percentage. Like, like the, yeah. the chance, of, uh, chance to win. So let's, let's start with these. Um, why don't you start, I mean, in, in any order you want, like Cincinnati, San Francisco, Tampa, let's, let's start with those three and, and the Jets. Yeah, I, I, I like to throw with this many teams. I like to, I always like to start with the, th the teams that there's no reason to take them. So right, we, we can th we can throw out San Francisco. Uh, there, there. This is going to be a trend. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say this multiple weeks. They're they're a 100 save. There's no reason to use them. They're the highest uh, winning percentage team for weeks four, five, 11, 15, and they're the second highest for 10. So. There's no reason. There's no reason to take San Francisco. Right. It doesn't matter that they have high. This is one of those spots where the, the high EV doesn't matter. You're going to have high EV in any week that you take them because they're going to be spread out so far ag across the, so many weeks that they're going to be one of the highest EV plays in any week that you would want to take them. Uh, Cincinnati falls I, I, in, in the same in the same group. Not as strongly be, uh, for the same reasons as San Francisco, but uh, they have they're like the second highest favorite in four nine thirteen and the and the biggest favorite in seventeen. So uh, again, extremely high EV, but you know we're talking about you know seventy five percent win percentage, where th they are going to be that or higher in all of those other weeks with similar EV. You may as well drop to a team in the you know the, in the mid sixties or 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 high sixties. With, with with lower EV to maximize the value of those teams later. And I agree. same with and, and same with Kansas City. They're not they're not near, they're not a big favorite, but you know for the same reasons, there's no reason to take them. I, I agree. I I think uh, uh, it comes down to especially in single picks, or I think it comes down to these one, two, three, four, five, six teams, uh, and then maybe we'll talk about dropping to Tennessee, but we'll talk about why you don't want to do that either. So. So I think I think the candidate plays um, are these six teams: uh, Jets, Buffalo, yeah. Seattle, Cleveland, Tampa, Vegas. I think that all makes perfect sense. Um, the the Vegas I'm going to talk about the Vegas one for a second be because it, Vegas's line crashed when when they benched uh, uh, Bryce Young for Carolina. Okay, Vegas was like a minus seven. And then for whatever reason, Andy Dalton has now been proclaimed like the great savior of the Panthers. <laughs> and, and that line crashed to five and a half. Um, so as, as a result, I don't know about this 20% uh, ownership projection. Um, but if in fact it's a 20% ownership projection, then, then, then on the one hand, they become uh, from an EV perspective, pretty poor, but but from a future value perspective, I mean, they're kind of the nuts, you know, like the, like it's very, very difficult to find, to find room to slot them in uh, later on. And, and, you know, even if you just look at survivor, grid, you see that, that blank slate over here, that, that purple zero, that's, pre that's pretty tempting. Even in, even in the face of a, of a, of a, of a sort of a low, you know, of a low EV. But then you look up again. I'm, I'm talking about all these at the same time. But and then you also look at say Tampa and Cleveland and Seattle. You know, they also have somewhat low future value as well. I mean, you you could make cases like Tampa. You could make cases that maybe in 13, if Carolina really is that putrid, that they could Tampa is good there. If you're in a pool that'll let you get to 17, Tampa is obviously a really good play at home against Carolina. And if you're in Circa, by the way, uh, Tampa is is Christmas B in 17, which is also very, very important. OK, so so there's that. 
Um, but aside from those two, Tampa has low future draft. Cleveland, I mean, you could you could slot them in sort of, but not that bit that much. And Seattle, you could slot them in sort of, but not that much. So I think that all four of those teams are the lower future value teams. And then then I'm going to look at Buffalo. They have they have they have obviously some better spots like in in uh, seven in. 16 and then you have the jets who they have some spots i mean they have denver in four they have the patriots in eight they they might end up being really good and be a good play in 11 or 13 or something so i'm i'm shuffling these teams but the vegas one looks the purest to me what do you what do you think about all this stuff uh, these are fun weeks to really think about because yeah. like you said there's a lot of ways to look at it uh so vegas is definitely the best team to start with in terms of discussion this is one where if they were 10 point favorites, I know it's hard to like just because then they would, you know, they'd be more valuable in some of their, you know, if they're 10 point favorites in this game, they'd be more valuable later on. But let's just say they were. I don't, really, I wouldn't even really care what the pick percentage was. I might just move all in on them. Right. Uh, because if I'm never going to use them, I'm gonna swallow. I'm gonna swallow the EV now and tr and try to make up for it later. As long as I am, as long as I'm benefiting by not having to take someone that's an equal favorite that, but a much stronger team like the Jets or Buffalo, you know, Kansas City, something uh, teams like that. Um, it, 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 but it's it, it's it's but it's it's tough because. They're also going to be a team that, you know, you know, a lot of people are thinking the same exact thing. Uh, but yeah. because of where their win percentage is in, in my regular pool, I'm, I'm not going to take them for, for, for that reason. I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to take them the other one. I'll explain why in a little bit, the one with double picks. But I think I think you just have to lay off Las Vegas I, in, in standard pools now. If, he, if, if the projections start changing where, you know, Seattle goes up and, or, T or Tampa Bay goes higher or Cleveland, there's a lot of teams could, that could take away the pick share away from Las Vegas. It's not like it's two teams. Five teams could, could uh, potentially grab and, and, and take some of that pick percentage away. Uh, another thing is what would happen if, you know, a big, you know, an injury happened? For, uh, it, in the next four or five days. What, you know, it does happen from time to time. I mean, that's why the Detroit line moved. I guess three of their defensive backs or you know, secondary were out, and that and that moved, that's what, I guess, moved, what moved the spread a, couple, a point or two. What teams are those people most likely to move to if they move off a certain team? Uh, you know, if they're more likely to move to one of these other teams, you know, you know, potentially Las Vegas could be a play again. But I, I think it's safer to lay off Las Vegas. It feels great when you, when you when it works. And if you don't – but if you don't take them and then they win, you feel like you wasted an opportunity. But you, you can't have it both ways. Uh, well, before before you move on, let me, let me again emphasize, this is a good time to talk, talk about this, is you have the spectrum of what type of pool that you're in, right? So, so the, the more – you you have to make double picks. Yeah. The more like future value matters, the, the higher Vegas shows up. Uh, okay. So let, let me just let me discuss uh, some of the, some of those reasons. Actually, so for my pool, I have doubles in 16, 17, 18. and and and, and, and most likely it, it, it's going to make it to those weeks. Even though we have we have doubles in six and twelve. What what I do for these types of pools is I look at when I'm, when I'm looking at teams to pick, I'm looking at those double pick weeks. I'm planning for this thing to go to week 17 as of right now. I, I'll, I might adjust later, but for right now, I'm looking at week 17. So I want to look at the teams that I want or don't want to have for those weeks. And the reason I think I like Las Vegas is because, and I keep going back and forth on this because because you can look at it from a two different ways, is – Las Vegas might be a chalky team. I know that sounds crazy. In sixteen, in, in sixteen, potentially, potentially. By that time, there's there's doubles in six, twelve, thirteen. So 
there's a, a lot of teams have been used. If they're a favorite against Jacksonville, everyone's going to have to take two teams. Vegas might be a fairly hot, you know, high, highly picked team relative to the other teams. So if there, if it's not a team that I would want to take, then I would rather take them now and increase my chances of moving along. You could also go the other way and say, well, I want to, I want to maximize every single opportunity. But again, when you got to take 20 teams, you know, 24 teams to make it through, you're taking all but eight teams in the league. So you're going to have to take the worst of it at some point. So I, I, I feel like I'm going to take loss. I like Las Vegas and Seattle for my one with late season double picks because a team like the Jets, um, you know, you just don't, I would rather use those in other weeks, but you don't need the Jets in 15 or 17. No. So if you're not going to use them in 15 or 17, that means I, for a double pick pool, I can use them earlier. I can use them this week. I can use them next week. But I'm not going to – I'm, I'm going to 100% have to use them by 13 because if, if this thing goes the whole way, am I really going to get through and not use the Jets? If I don't, then I probably took the worst of it, you know, uh, somewhere along the way. And I'd, uh, I'd have been better off, you know, using the Jets earlier on. All right. So, so that's, that's Vegas. Now let's, let's, let's talk, let's go, let, let's talk about the other lower future value teams like um, yeah. Tampa, Cleveland. Cause I think Tampa Cleveland's a little bit lower future value than Jets and Buffalo. So I think. So what, what do you think of Cleveland and Tampa? Um, so Tampa, I already, I already used them in, 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 in some of my stuff. Yeah, me too. Um, you know, very, I mean, I'm definitely not going to take them with, with, at, at these pick percentages. It's very tempting when you watch these games and Denver and Carolina can't score. But again, you have to remember that the team's going to win what, whatever the percentage that they're supposed to win at, you know, right. it just ended up going to be a win or a loss. So it, it, but I'm glad even I think about that because even if I get tempted by that, then I feel that a lot more people not only going to think that, but they're going to follow through with that. They're, they're going to be looking to fade uh, Carolina in particular for the rest of the season. They're going to be looking to fade Denver for the rest of the season. Eventually these teams aren't going 0 17. Right. They're going to win a few games. And, you know, you just hope that they win the games that matter the most to knock out the most amount of people. Tampa Bay also has, you know, lots of potential value spots. I'm all, you know, I'm always going to look at the end of the season, whether it's singles or doubles. Tampa Bay is a team that's going to be picked very highly this week. They're probably going to be picked very highly in set, you know, in 17 as well at current spread. So right. it's not that you'd want, you know, want to, you know, quote, save them for that, but, you know, you could also use them in uh, 12, 13, and 14. They're, they're at sure. the Giants, at Carolina, and Las Vegas. So sure. Tampa Bay actually has some, I think, very good potential value. If they just end up holding the line with where they're at right now and th those other teams, uh, the Giants and Carolina in particular, keep crashing, Tampa Bay is going to be a team that you, you, know, you would like to have. And – when you, when you think, well, wait a minute, why would I want to take Tampa Bay? They're the like 10th highest favorite team right now, you know, for those weeks. But remember what you need to do is you got to look at what teams you're likely to have to even choose from if you were to get to there. And if you sort by week 12, I, I talked about this, you know, quite a bit the last couple of seasons, even though they're the 10th high, the 10th highest favorite, a lot of the teams ahead of them, you're just not going to have. Most likely, you're going to have already used Kansas City. Miami, let's just assume Tua didn't get hurt. You probably would have used Miami as well. Dallas is probably like a 50-50 for most people. Um, you know, Chicago will, will have been used. You know, Cleveland will be available. Same as Seattle. Okay, well, actually, it looks like if week 12, you probably wouldn't need them. You're going to have – most people are going to have probably four or five choices. So – but if eight of those teams you would likely have used by then, Tampa ends up becoming a very valuable team for you to, to you know, to want to have. And because they have multiple uh, slots to be used from that point forward, being week 12, 13, and 14, it's a team that 
in a weird way, you'd want to almost save them for that if you could use them in three different weeks and you might really need them in one particular week. Um, so what are we, what do we got then? So, so you have the, you have the, do, uh, uh, do, do you, do you feel those are layup? Do you think Tampa I, I see that's the thing. Like, like it depends on your pool. So I, I think that Tampa in single, in single pick pools. Right. So I, I like to sort by EV first and, and, yeah. and in single pick pools, they're just going to show up weaker. You know, yeah. uh, they're just showing up weaker. Their EV sucks um, relative to some of these other teams. And as a result, unless you really, you know, get a big future value bump out of them, they're probably not so great. So, so, uh, so uh, uh, I, I agree. I think Tampa is probably the lowest on the list um, of, of all these teams. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, not even so much to even, yeah, I mean, it's also nice to save them, I guess. Like if you have them 17, 12, 13. Anyway, so yeah, I agree with you. I, I think I think that Tampa uh, is 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 the weakest of those. What about um what about Cleveland as opposed to Buffalo or the Jets? Cleveland's definitely an interesting one. There's, there's a lot of choices. I mean, I, I like all the remaining teams we have. Yeah, to there's five, I, I have five of them. These, these are the only five in, in traditional pools that I, I'm gonna pick between, but you can go a lot of different ways. I only have two entries left, so I'm I, you know, I'm only going right. to pick two of them. But if yeah. I had ten entries left, I'd only pick three. So in the end, right, right, you know, I'm going to have to decide what my top three is. So let's uh, okay. We can start with Cleveland. Um, you know, moderate uh, pick percentage. I, I feel this is one that if people get off, I mentioned earlier, where if people are sorting by win percentage or looking at win, uh, at point spreads, if, if, if the, the care, if the Las Vegas or Tampa Bay spreads move against move against them, I feel like Cleveland would be a team that people would, you know, move to. And I'm not saying I wouldn't take them because of that, but that's just kind of what my, my, my gut is. Cause I think a lot of people just sort. And even though their win percentage is very similar to, you know, Buffalo and Seattle, they're going to see six and a half, like, oh, that's bigger than, you know, five and four and a half, not realizing that that's still very close in win percentage. We're talking 70 versus 60, you know, 68. So I think Cleveland could be a little potentially overpicked if people share. You know, I, I, see, I, 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 I completely agree with that. See, I, I think that, um, I think that Cleveland is going to be probably as owned as Vegas um, pretty much across the board. I, I think that I think that all three of these teams like Cleveland, Tampa and Vegas are going to be, be much going to be similar. I wonder if we could get a break and, and this, this Jets Buffalo thing can really be six and 4%. I, I don't know if that's, if that's yeah, it's hard to, before before we move to that because I agree that's hard to believe for Cleveland if Cleveland didn't have these other you know they have they have the Chargers in nine they have Pittsburgh in twelve they're at at the Broncos in thirteen again these don't seem like um, you know really fun picks to make no. but again you're going at some point you're going to have to make these plays it might not be these right. particular plays but you're going to be picking whether you choose them or you're forced to, at some point, you're taking a three-point favorite. You're, 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 you, you, you will have no other choice. At some point, it's going to happen. Because Cleveland has the potential to have some spots that I wouldn't mind taking, and there's multiple of them, not, not 9, 12, 13. Again, not very glamorous, and, and, their, and their end of the road is not very good unless two is out for the year and Miami's season's over, you know, there's really not much to one in Cleveland at the end of the season, Kansas Ooh. city at Cincinnati at Baltimore. So be, because there, there's some chances in the middle, I don't mind just not taking them, but if they had nothing, if, if you know, if, if, if it was very sparse for, you know, potential, I would, I would say, you know what, I'm just going to take Cleveland anyway, but because there's a chance you might really like them or, or might need them. I I'd use that as my tiebreaker. Um, and who, uh, who and, have, and not and not and, and lay off. Who would have thought at the beginning of the year that like Seattle over Miami would be viable? You know what I mean? Like, no, I know it's, <laughs> it's, it's incredible how quickly. Yeah, it's incredible how quickly it changes. You like them this week? If you have them available, I mean, 
For Seattle, yeah. Um, I, I, I have them slotted for one of my yeah. two two picks for my one with two entries left. I, I, I so, but we, my, my, my favorites are Buffalo, the you know Jets and Seattle. I, yeah. I think, I think the Jets. If you have multiple picks, I, the Jets are mandatory. It, it's a mandatory portfolio play, and the reason I say it's a portfolio play at some point, unless you are one to want to move all in in a particular week this week and next week as it stands right now are the best weeks for the jets so if you're not going to move in on them next week if you have multiple picks you just have to take them with some of your picks this week otherwise you're you're not if you're not going to do it next week anyway there's still plenty of spots for them i i I don't want to overlook that but in the in the middle of the season they they got some you know really good potential but the end of the season they got they have, you know, three, they have three road games against, well, again, Miami, that one's tough because we don't know exactly what's going to happen. But if Tua comes back, th- two of their five games are against Miami, and then they're at Jacksonville, and they're at Buffalo. So that's not a team that, if Miami is healthy, that you're necessarily going to want or need for the end of the season. So you're either going to play them now, next week, or you're, you're going to play them in the middle of the season, which you very well could. But if, you're, if you have five entries – this is the time to use some of your jets. You, you just, you have to use some of them right now. The, the problem with Buffalo, Mike is, is, I mean, there are two spots that they're yeah. fucking smash, you know? Um, yeah. Th- that, that's, that's the note. I, that's the note I have for this one is this is, I, I think you have to pick Buffalo as well to set up the fade um, because they're, their other two best weeks are they're the, I think they're the biggest favorites. Seven, in those and, weeks. Seven, seven and 16. Yeah, so Buffalo is also a, an absolute mandatory pick if you have if you have multiple picks. So, bu- Buffalo is absolutely mandatory. Now, I'm I only have two in a, in a traditional pool. I might just lay off of them and keep. And my mine goes in the playoffs, and I know that's it's, oh, Mike, why would you keep something for the playoffs? Well, every year that I've won this pool, I've won it three times. It's gone in the playoffs all three times. So, right. um, you know. If it always happens, then you you, you, you kind of have to plan for that. But I think Buffalo is 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 a mandatory pick, uh, especially that pick percentage. Even if it's higher, though, I still think it's mandatory because the, what was their pick percentage in Week One? It wasn't not much. It wasn't that high. Um, Here we could actually. It was fourteen in, in one of my pools. So it they were fifteen. That means, they were fifteen. So it's not there's nothing wrong with taking them in those other weeks, but if you if your strategy is not to put you know is to fade those weeks anyway, like oh I'm gonna I'm gonna well let's well, hold on well, actually, let's, let's, actually, let's, let's, well, let's, seven, let's actually seven is a good week to play Buffalo yeah let's yeah let's dive into this a little bit more so so yeah. Buffalo and seven so seven is an interesting one because Buffalo is they're, they're the top spread right now. But you also have Jacksonville, who who is who is who is um widely available, widely available, and is going to get and is going to get jammed because because they don't have anything else. Um, I don't think. Uh, well, they might, but it depends what Green Bay looks like at that point. It depends what Minnesota looks like, and then you got the Rams, um, who also might. Well, the Rams have eleven, and maybe seventeen, but. I think the Rams will take some money. So, so Buffalo in seven, I think is decent. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. But I, but, but, but uh, Buffalo in, then Buffalo in 16 is obviously just, I mean, just a big freaking, uh, listen, I say, so, this, 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 so but, this, you know, this is not updated yet. Um, no, no. The, the, as of right now, the Rams, the Rams and, and Raiders are equal on, yeah. on betting market. Yeah, Rams are no it's, seven it's like, point it's favorite. Like, it's, like, it's like a it's like a three point favorite game right now. Okay. But I, I definitely overlooked this. This is, and, and I was very good the last two seasons of doing this. Just because a team is the biggest favorite doesn't mean you should fade them. Look at the strength. And since everyone's right. going to have all these teams available, yeah, it makes it more viable to you know to profitably take Buffalo or just to like shrug your shoulders. Ah, this is you know this is good. This is good enough. Um, I'll I'll probably. You know, it's one of the, you know, eventually you're just going to have to eat it. I mean, you're never going to be taking the highest EV play because it's not going to be available or right. sometimes you should just eat it because 
you know, for, you know, because your, your run out the, the, the next three weeks is so unique and so separated. That, that's more an end of, end of the season thing. Buffalo is a very, very strong consideration. I, I think it's, pro- I still think it's probably a uh, top three pick uh, for sure. Again, we're not looking at EV. We're looking at, we're, we're combining EV with the likelihood of you wanting to play some of these other teams later in the season, or you're just going to outright save some of these teams for, for a stretch. And I like, I like looking at stretches because having one team with a standalone game with nothing before it, nothing after it, it's kind of dangerous. If, if, if something happens to that team or, or the other team is really good, then you, you know, you, you're at greater risk of, of, of not realizing to use that pick. But if there's a lot of other potential picks, you know, right before it or right after it, then you could still have a lot, you know, a lot of choices for that team. Uh, Buffalo really you're only taking them as it is right now three seven 16 and then you know after that you, you got to just see you know most likely though you know actually you know what I mean again they're only a small favor against the Jets but the Jets season's over and, and Buffalo's playing for it that, that's one of the things I'm really trying to work better on is if the season plays out really well for one team and they're there and they're right where they're supposed to be or projected to be. And then if the other team underperforms, these spreads completely change at the end of the season. Oh, and that's, that's why I talk a lot about the last, like, you know, four games of the season, because that's when teams are mailing it in that, you know, they're out of, they're out of the playoff race. So I, I still like Buffalo, but once you, if you don't use Buffalo here, I feel it's better to save them for, for the last three weeks. All right, all right. Let, let, let's get to the fun, the, the, the fun, this fun part of the segment. So let's presume that you had fifty entries left, and you had like all kinds of stuff, and you could screw around, you know, whatever. Yeah. It is. And and you had the inkling of 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 of, of gambling a little bit, um, or if you were in pools that have like big double pick weeks later on, and you have you had to steal something this week, like if, the, these drop plays. If you had to pick someone, like I'll throw two, three of them out there, like. Tennessee, Pitt, Indianapolis, for example, any of those kind of kind of suit you know tickle your tickle you a little bit, or that's or is that way too way well, too? Well, we're not including Seattle in that group, but I really like Seattle. No, I think Seattle's Seattle. actually a legitimate play. I wasn't talking about that. Uh, no, I know, but we kind of we kind of <laughs> glazed we kind of glazed over them. That, that, I don't I don't think we discussed them, but oh. I, I I do like Tennessee. I uh, I definitely like Tennessee. They've got yeah, again. I'm always looking at the end of the season. Uh, hosting Jacksonville, Cincinnati at Indianapolis at Jacksonville, Houston. That's doesn't seem like a team I, I that I'd want to even have, and you know, as a just in case. And if that's the case for a team like this, then you know that's that's a that's a that's a strong uh, lead to you know use them now, not use them, but if I wanted to you know to not use somebody else or use it as you know a, a portfolio play, just diversify a little bit. I definitely do like Tennessee because, yeah, maybe in the end, you know, things pan out to where you'd want them. But uh, I'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at those final four or five games, and I, that that doesn't interest me. I, I I'd much rather have a team like, you know, Las Vegas or a team like, uh, I mean, even Tampa Bay. At least they have Carolina and Las Vegas in 14 and in New Orleans in 18. So. I definitely like uh, Tennessee as a, as, as a as a possibility. I don't know if I'm going to do it, um, but uh, I don't. I actually, I'd even consider below that. I didn't consider Pittsburgh or Indianapolis at all. So let me look. Well, Pittsburgh's very useless at the end of the season. Very difficult schedule at Philadelphia. At they're home. good. They're 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 like they're like oh they're like amazing in eight. But I think they're going to be popular. Um, yeah. So yeah. So if you're if you're going crazy, yeah, Pittsburgh's a good one because you're you're it's in they have the hardest schedule of all time starting week eleven. Someone I was at the sports book and, and someone pointed this out to me and I thought they were lying because like there's surely there's no way this is possible. Pittsburgh does not play their first division game until week eleven. Jesus. How is that possible? And they're also in, in that stretch, they're also at Philadelphia. And then they play the Chiefs and and they play the Chiefs. 
That's 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 their closeout schedule. Has there ever been a more difficult uh, close? Their last eight games are six division games, and then the Chiefs and at the Eagles. That's that's insane. Uh, I, Indianapolis, um, I, I I would uh, I would keep it. I would I would not use Indianapolis because again, the end of the season, last four games at Denver, Tennessee, at the Giants, Jacksonville, way too much potential. If they're playing for a wild card, the other teams have hung it up. I would rather have. Indianapolis. Not that you're going to use them, but you're much more likely as it is right now. You're almost never going to use Pittsburgh, even if they're a playoff team. Uh, you're just much more likely to use Indianapolis. So I would use Pittsburgh over Indianapolis um, if you decide. So unfortunately, or fortunately, whatever, again, we're, as with most things I do with True DFS, it, it, it's, it's much less important to tell you who to pick than just kind of ideas, you know, and how to figure this stuff out for yourself. Because I have no idea who everybody else picked. I have no idea who the listeners picked. I have no idea what kind of pools you're in, right? So that's why we talk through all these possibilities. Um, I think that as long as you avoid San Francisco and Cincinnati, yep. um, and then obviously like anything that has no chance to win, whatever, then I think it really does just kind of depend on what on, on, on what your priorities are and who, who you've picked already. But I, But again, like – this Vegas play, it's it's it really does like depend on your on your pool. Like I was having this discussion with my partner over Tesla earlier today. Like Vegas, their 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 EV is hopeless. Okay, their EV is bad. They're 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 um they they and part of that is because they're popular for no reason. I mean not, now that the line has crashed, but in like our my pool that's going to require doubles. You know, I, I don't worry too much about that, you know, and you, you, you gave an extreme example. You're like, you know what, if the, they were a 10 point favorite and they're 70% owned, I don't care what their ownership is. I'll play them, but they're not a 10 point favorite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's true. So I'll eat a little bit of, uh, of e I'll eat some EV stuff for pools that I know I'm going to need that future value stuff. But I think in single pick pools, I think Vegas is, is, is bad. Um, yeah, I definitely agree with that, and I feel embarrassed. I, I definitely went back and forth in Las Vegas for my other pool. And again, like 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 Eric said, all that matters is don't take those three teams: San Francisco, Cincinnati, Kansas City. And for the other five, six, seven teams, depending on who you use the first two weeks, and really what you know what your what your forecast is. What I, I don't know exactly if, if what I'm doing is correct especially since the landscape changes week to week when you, when you keep having these catastrophic injuries, when players are lost for the season, the landscape, you know, it's very hard to do this analysis because we just don't even know what's going on with Miami. He might not come back the rest of the year, but if he comes back in four, four to six weeks that, you know, that certainly changes some of it, but you need to make some educated guesses. And in the end, you're much better off having lots of choices than very few choices. Yeah. And if you, and if you're going to have to do something painful, I would rather choose it than be forced onto it because when you're choosing to That's drop, a good point. That's a really when good you're choosing, I'll say it every, every year, if you're choosing to drop, you're doing it because it's a highly separated play with a very, very, very low pick percentage. Two seasons ago, we took with 126 left. We had two entries in Circa. There were three standalone teams in the top. that were all 10 point favorites, Philadelphia, Buffalo, and Dallas. My partner and I said, we're not going to take any of them. The fourth highest favorite team was Atlanta. But yeah. we we just felt that everyone who didn't take those three teams was going to take them. So we won, We decided to drop again. We took the two teams that made you want to throw up in your mouth a little bit because it, 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 it was so distasteful to, like, even consider taking those teams. But I really felt strongly that if it made me that sick at the thought of taking Jacksonville and Indianapolis with a new quarterback, I just didn't think anyone else would do it. And we ended up having two standalone picks out of 126. And those are the only two teams that lost that week. But that was our strategy. Our, you know, it was, it was we, we succeeded in having standalone picks and we were, we were willing to take the risk. The upside would have been Buffalo and Dallas were both Thanksgiving teams in Circa. We did not want to use those teams. Philadelphia, the next three weeks, were one of the highest favorited teams. We wanted all three of those teams for later, and we wanted to fade Atlanta. That was our strategy. It didn't work at high upside. So we chose, we chose, the, you know, we chose, it was bad EV. I actually looked it up our, uh, before we started today on, on uh, the Survivor Atlas. 
our EV was like 0.89 and 0.91. It was, it was the worst of all the picks. But if it worked out, we would have made up for it later. If you, if you take all these chalky teams, two things are going to happen. You're going to be forced on to very similar paths as a lot, lots of other people. And if you make it to the end, you're splitting it with a lot of people rather than, you know, solo winning it or winning it two or three ways. In the end, it's not necessarily about winning, winning. It's about winning the most money. And by taking some of these chances and setting up a, an optimal path and trying to find or, or guess what that optimal path is, if you get there, you're going to win a much larger a piece of the pie. All right. Listen, good luck, everybody. Root us all in. Root, uh, hopefully you guys will go into the discord. And, and again, the pools are dropping like flies already. So hopefully people are still in something. Uh, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Good luck, everybody. And see you later, Mike. Good luck. Bye-bye. See you, Eric. See you later.